Welcome to the Daily Focus for July 12th. This is an extension of our teaching ministry at FBC. For more resources, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and you could visit our website. Today, we're in Romans chapter 12, looking at verses 3 through 6. It says, For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. In the MacArthur Commentary, there is this story about a group of German soldiers in World War II, German students after World War II that volunteered to help rebuild some of the the things that were bombed. It was um, an English cathedral, and it had been severely damaged by German bombs. And the work was moving forward, yet it became concerning when um, a statue of Jesus was, was being restored. Originally, the statue had outstretched arms, and the inscription on the statue read, Come unto me. The workers did their best to restore and reattach the arms, but the hands of the statue and the arms of the statue, they had just been too destroyed to restore. So after much discussion, they scrapped the idea, and they decided just to leave the statue without hands and to change the inscription to say, Christ has no hands but ours. Now, I don't agree with the theology in that Jesus is, is, is limited. I don't, I don't think that's true. Jesus is not limited in what he can do, nor is he restricted by human disobedience if there, if there was a, restric, a restriction on Christ. We could not overpower. However, it is the case that God has given the gospel to the church, it, the church being the grand total of all the saints redeemed. And it's the task of those who know Christ to share Christ. Remember Romans Chapter 10, where it talked of those that have beautiful feet and that how how one will hear the truth only because a preacher is sent. And unless someone goes with the message of salvation, then there is no hope. Remember, Romans 12 is the beginning of Christian application in the book. And our first obligation, as we saw yesterday, our first obligation is to God as a living sacrifice. This is our spiritual act of worship. This is consuming to the believer, a complete and total surrender to God. We are not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Yet Romans 12 will make a quick progression from the mind to the body. And that loving and living for God is followed by being equipped by God for service. The order is is vital, as you cannot serve or work your way into the kingdom of God, yet that comes by grace through faith, yet, and consequently, the result of redemption is Christian service. Hear me again. The result of redemption is always Christian service. There are always some who will claim that they are saved and that they belong to Christ, yet They do not have a desire to serve God or to serve the body of Christ. Is that possible? Is that person just just fooling themselves? Likely so. For it does not make sense how a person can be redeemed, set apart, filled with the Spirit of God, receive intercession from Jesus and the Spirit of God, and all the while live their life completely for their own desires and have no hunger and no thirst to serve God. It's James chapter 2, verse 14, that says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? And goes on to say, Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Look with me in verse 3. Paul writes, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Here's the tendency. That when one grows in their intelligence of God's word, and when one is gifted by God and equipped with spiritual gifts, as God promises, to serve the church and to serve the body and to honor God, and when Jesus works through and around that person, then the tendency of that person is to be prone to arrogance and pride. I'm not sure if you've ever worked on a car with a young boy, maybe changing the oil or rotating the tires. Good dads can, can take a young boy 
and they can put the buoy in the center of all the action. Together, they can hold the impact wrench, but the buoy pulls the trigger. Together, they can lift the tire, but the dad is the one lifting all the weight, hunched over, but lifting all the weight. Together, they get the job done, yet when the boy walks back into the house to give the report to his mom, he speaks of all the jobs that he did to rotate the tires on her car. My friend, in your service, before you celebrate your gifting or the successes that come to you, keep a short chain on chapters 1 through 11, a short chain on that anchor. Keep your eyes on the full view of God's mercy as chapter 12 starts. The gospel is good news for salvation, yet it is for a seasoned Christian also. So don't stray from the gospel. The fact that without Jesus, you were dead in your sins and, and, the, and the wage that you earned is the wage of death and how God, rich in mercy, how Jesus loved you first and that while you were still a sinner, that Christ died for you. The application for today is a call to humility. It's, it's 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, where Paul writes to Timothy and he shares this with him. He says, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, an insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed from me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Paul never got over that he was saved and he was able to maintain humility because he remembered who he was and who he is without Christ. So two points today. Do you belong to God? And if you do, where are you serving? Secondly, if you are serving, then do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but think with sober judgment. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Your word speaks of uh, what you have done for us, Father, the, the, the reaches of your grace and the goodness of your mercy. God, I, I pray that we don't lose sight of that. I, I pray that you would maintain in us, Father, a sense of humility in our service. God, I pray for those that do love you. They are yours, but they either haven't been discipled to serve or they're uncertain of where to serve. I pray that they would be sparked to, to do that. There are jobs, Father, for all sorts. And there is no such thing as a Christian retirement, God. And you call all those with breath in their lungs to serve you and to serve the church somehow. That may be through intercession in prayer where they pray for saints. Or God, it may be through uh, digging in and, and, and working at the church or, or supporting some ministry. I don't know what that is, Father. But I pray for those listening today that they would seek out a church. And in that church, in that body of believers, they would find a place to serve you and to serve the body. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.